The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or to view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. The uh, purpose of these recitations, small group recitations, is so that we can get out the key concepts over the week mm -hmm. and what I call the essential understandings. You know, what are the really important points for the week so that when the first quiz comes, you will know how to deal with it. So let's um, start with that, but you're going to do, you're going to help me think through this. So take a minute or two, write down on a piece of paper two or three things that you think are the most important things that you heard, saw, read this week about this course. Okay, let's report out. I want kind of one from a number of you who wants to volunteer here. Uh, using different reference frames. Say it again. Using different reference frames. Using different reference frames, right. I'm going to write that once I get to chalk the work. Using, I'm going to write it as multiple reference frames. Close enough? Okay. How about, what's your name? Um, Christina. Christina? What do you have? Um, all points on a rigid working object have the same rigid rotation. Okay. She said all points on an object, rigid object that's rotating, all points have the same rotation rate. So this is uh, rotation and translation of rigid bodies. I'm going to generalize what you said a little bit because somebody else tell me, what can you say about translation? So rotation, all points, the key point is all points share the same rotation rate. How about translation? Two different points on an object. What can you say about it? They follow the same paths. Parallel paths. They follow, go through exactly the same parallel paths. Okay. So those are two key things to remember about that. How about another point? Bring an with displacements and their velocities can be considered vectors. Okay. This is actually quite important. This is. Um, I'm going to write it slightly differently. We need to talk about this. And that is that um, rotations, to be absolutely correct, finite rotations are not vectors. I want to come back to that in a minute. Lots of possible confusion around that. No, one more. A couple more. Well, actually, there's more. Yeah. The MLM strategy. Ah, MLM. So I mentioned that last time. That's how to, That's problem solving my way, which is M. First M is figure out the motion, describe the motion. That's kinematic. Second M is. Well, not the second M. The second, L, the second term is L. What is that? Laws. Laws. Apply the physical laws. And the second M? No. Do the math. So motion, laws, and math. OK, there's something else here. Well, this, you may have just decided it's encompassed in that, but I want to go a little further than that. Yeah, what, what, can you, what, what did we talk a lot about yesterday in lecture? The different types of Accelerations and velocities in translating and rotating frames. So. Translating and rotating frames. Running out of room here, but you get the point. All right, that's a pretty good list. If I'd, if I'd been coming up with a list on my own, what I would have thought was important, that would have been 
would have captured most of those things. Certainly this is really important this week. Uh, and we definitely need to learn how to use translating rotating frames. And you're absolutely in trouble if you don't know this. It's just sort of fundamental to the whole thing. Okay. And then this is a subtle point. Let's, bring, let's start right there for a second. Um, who has a, somebody got a textbook? It doesn't actually really matter. Let me borrow your notes. All right. Rigid body. Got the print on the front. I'm going to rotate it twice. The x-axis and we'll call this the z-axis. And it comes out bottom point, top actually, pointing at you. So I did that, right? So now I'm going to do the rotation. Now th this one first. And then what was the other rotation? That one. Different answer, right? Totally different answer. And you can't add angles as vectors. Doesn't work. And it just, it's just a, uh, the way I think of it, you know, mathematics is largely done to help des describe the physical world. You know, Newton and all those people were figuring out needed calculus to describe the motion of the planets. Vectors were invented to do analytic geometry. And it just doesn't work for angles. You just can't use them for angles. It's just, you know, the, the vector math that they figured out just wasn't quite clever enough to include angles. However, vectors can be applied to positions, velocities, accelerations, and angular velocities and angular accelerations, but not angles themselves. That's the basic, basic thing you need to learn from that. Okay, let's... Um, use of multiple frames. We're going to do that today. We're going to now apply this and this and this today to do, a pro to do some problems. And let me see where I want to go first with this. So I have a problem that I want to do. And it's a circus ride. There's an arm. And that arm is rotating. And attached to the arm is a cross piece, and a passenger can sit in each one of these things, and this is basically horizontal. You're looking down on it. So you'd be riding around in these cups at the circus, and it's going around and around. And I want to, I want to know the uh, velocity, what's the velocity of point B in the O frame? And so this has to do, one of the things on this list might be to get the notation down. So this is the velocity of, this is the point, and this is the frame. Okay. So, what can you write down? Just take 30 seconds. See if you can remember, write down the general velocity formula that was put up yesterday. Vector velocity formula for a point that's in a moving frame that's moving in a fixed frame. Came up with a general formula, had two or three terms in it, and we'll, we'll walk our way through it.
I realize I did something maybe slightly out of order, so hold that thought. You've written down what you've got. Let's, um, do we have to do something before you can actually write that. We haven't actually picked our reference frames, have we? All right, so think about that for a second. How would you set up this problem? What would you make translating reference frames? And what would, you know, you're rotating translating frame, where would you assign it? Think about it for 30 seconds and then. Okay, who's got to take a shot at it for me? Where would, where would you pick reference frames for this problem? Yeah, what's your name? I'm Ben. Ben? Ben. Um, o and along the cross. So here, here, for sure, this is your inertial frame, not moving, right? Okay. And? Two axes on the so you would put one up here. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna. So I'm gonna put a line. I'm gonna line it with a cross, and I'm gonna stick out here. I'm gonna call it x2, and then there'd be a y2 here, and it rotates with the cross. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's pretty good. That's a, that's good. Now go back to that equation. Now give me the velocity, the general expression. I don't want you to work out the details. Just the what what. What set of terms would you plug things into now to get the velocity of B and O? Then we'll evaluate the terms and talk about it. Using now what we've decided here. Okay, somebody help me out. So what are, what's on the right-hand side of this equation? First term, Mary. Uh, what's your name? Steven? Steven? Velocity of A with respect to O. All right. That's the velocity of this point in this frame, right? All right? What else do we need? What's your name? Uh, Andre. Andre? Yeah. Uh, yeah, Andre. The velocity of B with respect to A. So I hear a velocity of B with respect to A. And what is that? Is that influenced by rotation? Can you describe what you mean by the velocity of B and A physically? Uh, just if, if, if B is moving in the, in the reference frame, X2 and Y2. So it's as if you were Stationary. sitting on that frame, right? Does the rotation have anything to do with what you see? No. no. So this is, I sometimes remind myself right here, this is omega equals zero. And you can just set the omega equal to zero. What you would see is, the, is what this term is. Do we need anything more? Name? Christina. Christina. So you gave it to me once before. It's going to take me a while. Um, it's the rotational motion of um, B spinning on that moment. So it's has to do with the omega, as seen in the reference frame of the origin, um, cross product with. Okay, and we have the name of that frame to help us out. This is then frame A, you know, X2, Y2, Z2, if you really wanted to write it. So it's no, and we just call it frame A. So this would be RB as in A. And these are all vectors, and I often forget to underline them. All right. Do we have it right? Anybody want to add to that? Fix it? Correct it? Which? Steven, right? I left it vague on purpose. We need to figure that out. He, he asks, you know, is it omega 2 or omega 1? Really important point we want to make today about the, what omega this is. We'll get to that. Yeah? Well, if they're rotating in the same direction, wouldn't it be added in both omega 1 and omega 2? Well, okay, let's talk about it right now. Are we agreed that this, are we agreed that this is the right formula? All right, then let's set about figuring it out. Uh, and let, we can talk about this term first. 
So we want to know, this is the rotation rate of this arm out here in the base frame is what it seems, that's what the notation says. And we know that the rotation rate of this first arm in the base frame is this, and we know that the rotation rate of this thing in the, um, with respect to, now we've met, now this has gotten a little complicated because this isn't quite accurate, exact enough. This is omega-2 with respect to this arm. That's what's given in this problem. So this is omega-2 uh, with respect to the arm OA. All right, yeah? Does that mean it's omega-2 FC from coordinate system A? No, FC, coordinate system A, X2, Y2 rotates. And if you're sitting in there, you wouldn't see it. So this is the, to the, ro it, it, what the it, this is correct. It's the rotation rate as seen in O. So we need to figure out what that is. And I'm telling you, in this case, you were given, I could have, you might have been given the rotation rate in O. You weren't. You were given the rotation rate relative to here. So I'll write it as W2 with respect to this arm OA. So what, how do you get? We need omega in O is what? Show me out here. Good. But what is it? Now I'm going to, let's deduce it. If my, my arm here, this is the first arm, and this is the at AB link, okay? Now, if omega with respect to this arm, this thing weren't moving with res no rotation rate relative to this, the thing, whole thing would be straight, right? And it's going around like this. What's the rotation rate of the link out here? Omega 1. Hmm, okay. Uh, and now this arm's not moving, but this is rotating relative to it at omega 2. What's the rotation rate of the link out here? Just omega 2. <coughs> if I put the two together, what is the rotation rate of this arm, this second link? <laughs> right. Omega 1 in, certainly in O, plus omega 2. It's not with respect to A. I'm just going to call it with respect to the R, maybe. Even this notation is failing a little bit. But you get what I mean. It's omega 1 plus omega 2. And let's just write it as omega 1 plus omega 2. And what direction is it in? It's a vector. So one of the things we have to pay attention to are unit vectors. Yeah. Yeah, so this has got a capital I hat here and a capital J hat there. And coming out of the board, K hat, right? Now, this is certainly K hat, capital K hat. This one, though, is relative to, it's the rotation rate of this thing. Here's a reference frame. What's sticking out this way? A little K2, right? But is it, is it parallel to capital K? Always parallel to capital K? Throughout, so they're the same thing. If unit vectors in this are parallel, they amount up the same thing. So we can put capital K, lowercase k, anything we want here, and it's correct. Okay, now we got an answer for that. So when you're given, when, when one thing is on, attached to another, and you're given the, if out here you are given the rotation rate in the base frame, you're done. But if you're given the rotation rate relative to some other moving part, then you have to add them up to get the true rotation rate. That's the bottom line message. All right, so we now have, we started, we're trying to f figure out this expression here. And we figured, we started with the, one of the harder terms. And we need to figure out, finish, to finish it though, let's uh, do this over here. 
we have a velocity of a in and we have the velocity of b in a with no rotation and we have omega b in o and we'll, let's finish that we know what omega is now the uh, whoops it's not omega it's an, the third term is omega b in o cross r b a so we've gotten the first bit of this. Let's finish the problem. This is omega 1 plus omega 2 times k hat cross with what? We need a length. I'll call this L. It's L long. So what is R B with respect to A? Yes. L x2 hat, and I'll call that L j2. The coordinate is x2. The unit vector would be i2, right? It's not a j, an i. So the unit vector is i2. OK, great. Now, what is k cross i2? K2. So we get omega L, omega 1 plus omega 2 J 2 hat. That's that term. And we need to figure out our other two terms. What's uh, this term? And remind yourself of the meaning. This is the velocity of point B with respect to the A frame, which is attached to it. It's on a rigid body. He said omega 2 times L. Zero. She says zero. Any zero. other? Zero. I hear another zero. Now, why do we mean why zero? Um, because it's rigidly attached onto the ride, which is moving around. It's not moving on the ride. The person is strapped. Right, so this term is always from the point of view of a person riding on the frame, riding on that frame. So you won't ever see rotation from inside the frame. You're just moving with it. Okay, so that's, it's called, in the Williams book, he calls this term V-rel. It's the relative velocity between these two points, no rotation. The, uh, so what is that in this case? I hear zero. Everybody agree it's zero? No motion. It's a rigid link. Two points don't move. So now we're just left with this one. And now, one of the points I really wanted to drive home today is, in fact, this problem is one that, depending on how you set it up, you can think of as actually having multiple rotating frames. And if you do that, what's the correct way to add up the parts so you get to the right answer? Because we've left this one for the last. And I want to make sure you go away with a kind of a, the, knowing the, a formula you can always use, and it's going to work. And the formula you can always use is the one that's of this form. Every one of these problems, including multiple links and things, you can build up by doing a sequence of this problem again and again and again until you get the whole answer. Okay, so we've actually done what I would call the outer problem first. We've done, worked out this thing. We kind of have to do the inner problem now. We could have done it in a different order, but I need to know the velocity of this point. And just to get you in the habit of using the, uh, the vector equation that we have, I want to know the velocity of A in O, and I'm going to attach a rotating frame to this arm, x1, y1. It rotates with this arm at that rate, okay? 
Now, if I, if I, and I want you to use that frame to solve for the velocity of this point. And that would be velocity of point A in O would be the uh, this one this this frame now is an O little x one y one z one it's a rotating frame right and because the O's are going to get confusing let's better not call it an O we'll call it a rotating one in Williams he uses a lowercase O but it's hard to do on the board let's call this C. So this is a frame C, X1, Y1. So this frame will be my C frame. So I want to know the velocity of point A. It's the velocity of what? Just use that top formula up there, but get put in the right points. So what's the first term mean? It's the velocity of the, see this point, this time the rotating frame, does the rotating frame translate? We have a rotating frame, does it have any translational velocity? No, but you still have to write the term down and set it equal to zero. So what's the right term? How do you write it? Right? It's the velocity of my reference frame. It's the translational velocity of that reference frame <coughs> in the O frame. And that's what it is. And in this case, it's 0 plus velocity of, yeah, A with respect to C. And I'll re remind you again. <coughs> You know, it's as if you were now rotating with it, and you're sitting at C, looking at A, what's its speed? Zero. Plus omega, what omega? Seen where? Measured from where? Measured with respect to what frame? O. All right, I hear O, cross with? We need a length. We'll make this length capital R scalar. So what do we? What's the cross product here? What's the unit vector? Correct unit vector. Not x, but x is the coordinate. The unit vector is. That term zero, that term zero, this term not. Omega one, and what's the unit vector associated with this omega one? K cross I? One. J. One half, right? And so we have R, omega one, J one half. And now <coughs> we should be able to write out the full answer of the velocity of B in O is the, the velocity of A, which is R omega 1 J 1 hat plus the velocity of B with respect to A, which was 0. plus the this term, which we figured out as L omega 1 plus omega 2 times J 2 hat. So we've done two or three sides. This is kind of a hard problem, actually, the, for the first time out. It has, because it has subtle, a number of subtle concepts in, built into it. You actually have two rotating bodies. How do you deal with them? Well, you, can, you do sequential applications of that vector velocity formula. Yeah? Um, so I was wondering why we made another coordinate system that's 
rotating with the arm to solve for um, the velocity of A and so, uh, for the, uh, the, she's, she asked, you know, why did we bother to make this other frame, right? Because, so, the, the problems are going to get nastier and nastier. I could have asked you when I walked into class, what is the velocity of point A? And you would have said, well, obviously R omega, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, why are we doing all this trouble when we, they, everybody knows from high school physics that it's just R omega? And the answer is, is because we're going to get to doing really nasty problems, and I want to make sure you understand all the subtleties about how we get these, in, when, in, these even when it's, so we started simple, but I did it the long, hard way, because so, later on, if I'd walked in at the beginning and just asked you right off the bat, what's the velocity of this point, go for it, you guys would have failed miserably, <laughs> right? It's not much harder, but it takes two sequential applications of what you think is obvious when you walk into class. So that's why. We're just doing it the hard way so that you get all the little nuances. Yeah? So why is it that there are omega 2 we have with respect to arm A, B, and with respect to arm OA? Why is it that way? Is that why is it with respect to arm A, B, and when you wrote that first with respect to arm OA? When I wrote the equation for, for the omega oh. two, like there you're saying that's with respect to OA, and later you say it's with respect to AB. Oh, I see. Uh, mm, because this is right. Yeah. Yeah. Because this is wrong. Yeah. 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 Y
So I1, it looks to me like uh, cosine theta i hat plus sine theta j hat. Do you agree? Just standard trig, right? And this one, takes me a minute to figure this out, uh, which is the theta here. This is theta. That's 90 minus theta, so this must be theta, right? So theta here. And if this is unit long, what's that? That projection there is? So J1 is, has two components minus sine theta i plus cosine theta j. And I highly recommend you write that one down. Make sure you can drive it yourself. You're going to need it again and again and again and again. Now, could we do the same thing for, could we convert j2 to the base frame? Remember, it rotates, so this x2 can be at any arbitrary position. But one, you know, so you have to, in order to do the problem, you have to pick a position. And then you'd have to draw an angle. And then you would have to apply this formula. And so you're going to end up with an i2 is some cosine phi, capital I, plus sine phi, capital J, and the same thing, J2, is minus sine phi I plus cosine theta J. So we, I'll do, we'll do a trivial example, a trivial, let's solve a trivial case. What is the instantaneous velocity at the moment that the coordinate system is lined up as we see and B is sitting right here? So we've got to go look at our, at our answer. Where was our final answer? Velocity of this guy here, right? What would be the contribution of this term to, we're, we're, we have to take each term and convert it to the base system in capital IJ terms, right? You do it one term at a time and then add up the components. So what is the, how do you break this one down and put it into capital I, capital J components? Hmm? Yeah, what's the answer? Uh, J2 would be negative sine i. Okay. So J, if it's lined up like this, J2 is pointing in what direction? Up. And what is that in this system? J. Just capital J. Oh. And that, it, this instant time, that's just capital J. Trivial, sub trivial calculation because this angle is 90 degrees. You plug in 90 degrees. This term goes to zero, this term goes to one. J2 is capital J. Right? And what about the other term? J1. You just got to go with the, it's the first one. It's J1, right? So you just got to go with the flow. It's what it is this. You'd substitute this in for J1 right here, and you'd have R1 omega 1 cosine theta sine theta and J's and K terms plus this thing, capital J. And you have just converted the answer, which was in terms of unit vectors in rotating, two different rotating frames. You've converted it all down to the base frame. So you selected a P, but then kept I, I picked, I just, I, this is the, oops, I'm sorry. I just made a mistake. You guys got to get better at catching me. That now makes sense? So phi is the angle that the J2 unit vector makes with the 
inertial frame, right? And theta is the angle that the J1 or I1 make with the inertial frame. Yes? Zero, though, right? uh, in, the, in this case, phi is zero. Yeah, did that did it still work out over there? Yeah. Sine of phi is zero, and cosine of zero is one, and you get, yeah, J. Then why did you, why did we didn't plug in anything for J now? We did. I did, but I just, you have to, you, you, uh, we, there isn't a simple answer for oh. it. And so you have to use the full expression. I just got lazy and didn't want to write it out. The answer is this. And, you know, stick in 30 degrees if you want, and then you'll get numbers. Right? Okay. So the real important point that we've just covered is that the answers are correct. Expressed in rotating unit vectors, expressed in different unit vector, different rotating ones. This is correct. Because you can take this and you can reduce it down to the base frame. So you will be, usually in problems that you're given, you'll be asked to express the answer in terms of unit vectors in the base frame. Or you'll be told you can leave it in, your, in whatever is your comfortable set of unit vectors. And most of the time, the first ones you'll arrive at are the ones in terms of the rotating coordinates that are easier to use. You know, the more natural the answer falls out in terms of these. Good. All right, so, and we've got three or four minutes left. What have I confused you with here? So, key concepts. What have we, uh, what hasn't been clear or maybe we didn't cover it yet? Another point. The reason we chose those as the starting reference frames instead of um, like R hats and theta hats. Only because at the beginning of class we talked about it, which frames do we want to use, and those we, and we chose those. Could we have used a, a polar coordinate system to do this problem? Sure. Twice. You do it once in each. <laughs> OK. Is there a way to know, you know up front um, which one would simplify uh, down to like the, the inertial I hats and J hats more simply? You know, the easiest way? Mm -hmm. Is there a way to know up front? No. That's just experience. Work lots of problems, and you'll get good at picking picking frame. We can probably, with time as we meet and talk about these things, we'll come up with some sort of general insights about how to do that. But Yes? Um, is this picture of the coordinate systems up here supposed to be those coordinate systems? This picture is the coordinate system of that first arm. Okay, so is that supposed to be P up there? Then? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. No. If, if this is the arm, first arm. That is the theta. Mm -hmm. if, if, and these are ones, right? The two, okay, so that's, that's the two not system. The, the two system would be these. Okay, I was wondering if that was the right or if that was not. No, this okay. is point A, if you will. Not well. It could be. It's lined up with point A. Well, then wouldn't this it be is point the a? Because I thought we decided that the phi was. This, this is point A, right? That is point A. Yeah. All right. And this is the arm CA. So is this one here the origin of this one? Well, look at whatever the unit vector is. Okay. Okay. The unit vector in this system is lined up with that arm. And so this is just a breakdown of the, these unit vectors so I could draw the angles and figure out the sines and cosines. You could draw a similar picture for I2J2s. And then it would be fees. Okay. Good question. Yes. So since you can choose between Cartesian or polar coordinates, could you set like one in Cartesian, one in polar, or like you can mix and match them? Or yep. Is that beneficial in some problems or? Polar is. I don't have time to show you today, but. I, for planar motion problems, which are things confined to a plane, they rotate, the ro axis of rotation is always in the k direction, which is all the problems that you ever did in 801 physics. You didn't do general things, actually. But for planar motion problems, 
polar cord, cylindrical coordinates, actually. You still need the K to describe the rotation, right? Polar coordinates, cylindrical coordinates are oftentimes really convenient. And you, they're easy to use because you've learned them a long, long time ago and you know the relations, right? But you can make it a rotating X1, Y1, Z1 rotating system and it'll all work out. I mean, what's, in this, we came up with this little formula here, right? This could just as easily have been R hat and this could have just as easily been, yeah. No difference whatsoever in a planar motion problem when you I attach an XY system that rotates with it, or I call it R and theta. Th th these are the same direction. R is in the direction of I1, theta is in the direction of J1. So use it when it's convenient, and it's convenient a lot of times, especially that nasty acceleration formula. In polar coordinates, it reduces down just to this set of five terms. You memorize it and just tick them off. Coriolis, centripetal. You, just, you see them right away. You know what they are. But there are certain problems, even in planar motion problems, that polar coordinates don't work for. doesn't work for them. English terrible day. And well, you think about that. Think of it. It's actually a simple problem. You put a dog on a merry-go-round, and the dog's running in a random direction on the merry-go-round and the merry-go-round's turning at some rate, and you only want one rotating coordinate system, r and theta, you can't do the problem with polar coordinates. Think about it. Just go away, think about why not. You can't describe, I'll tell you the answer in words, you go figure it out. You can't describe the velocity of the dog in polar coordinates. That is, if the dog's running around. If the dog is running around. If the dog's fixed on the rotating thing, then polar coordinates work. So if the dog's running, you can't do that velocity. So you need a more sophisticated coordinate system.